My name is Ana Cepeda and I am a legal intern in environmental rights and governance in living law as well as a lawyer in Ecuador. Living law is strongly engaged in and supportive of efforts for the advancement of public participation in line with principle 10 of the Rio Declaration as a founding part of our firm's mission to help equalize the scales of environmental justice. For this reason, we strongly welcome and congratulate the recent enactment of the law 19773 by the Uruguayan Parliament last week ratifying the Escaso Agreement. The Escaso Agreement is a regional convention agreed in March 2018 to move forward access to information, public participation, and justice in environmental matters in the whole of Latin America and the Caribbean. Similarly to the UNICEF Convention, to which the UK is party along with 47 other countries, Escazú is based on the three pillars of access to environmental information in Article 5 and 6, public participation in Article 7, and access to justice in Article 8. These pillars are supported by guarantees for persons seeking to real, realize their rights, guidance and assistance specifically for vulnerable groups, protection for human rights defenders, and arrangements to enhance the implementation of agreements such as the Implementation and Compliance Committee. The provisions of the SCASU Agreement addressing the protection of environmental defenders are specifically important and much welcome when considering the recent Global Witness Report, which highlights that globally 164 environmental activists were killed in 2018 alone of other cases known and many more face silencing intimidation and retributions contrary to fundamental human rights guarantees. Brazil and a number of other Latin American countries are consistently among the top offenders. Growing awareness of the ecological crisis must be translated into concrete actions to protect the planet and this means we need to protect the people who defend her. Of a specific ex interest the Escazú Agreement also includes general guiding principles of international environmental law, but also goes further by including more novel principles, such as non-regression and progressive realization to guide its interpretation. We also hope that countries in the UNICE region will be guided and learn from this advancement. The agreement stresses the need to treat environmental matters as a concern of every human being. It will strengthen cooperation with civil society through open and inclusive participation, not limited to environmental decision-making processes, but also in processes of revision, re-examinations, and updates regarding activities impacting on the environment. Uruguay is now the second country after Guyana to ratify the Escazú Agreement. This means only another eight more ratifications are now needed to bring the treaty into force. The UNICE Arus Convention is the regional treaty engaged in advancing the same human rights, access to information, public participation, and justice in environmental matters, and celebrated its 30th birthday last year. However, more active actions still need to be taken to keep progressing this human rights in practice. For example, the UK has consistently been found to be in non-compliance with the Aarhus Convention and civil society continue to support the full realization of its aims. In current UK Brexit context, it is particularly important to recall not only the legal requirements of the Convention, but the many advantages of implementing its provisions in the real world to uphold our environmental rights. Some key examples are 1. Promote environmental democracy and the rule of law 2. Enhance the legitimacy of decision-making processes related to environmental concerns 3. Support informed decisions as the authorities are provided with maximum facts and evidence from a diversity of per perspectives, four, reduce the risk of adopting decisions that could result in breaches of fundamental human rights and freedoms, five, reduce 
the risk of challengeability of policies and decisions. Six, empowering civil society to become active individuals who are aware that their everyday actions have effects on environment. Every country in the world needs to continue to advance its human and environmental rights in line with existing international laws. As also highlighted last year through the work of the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights and the Environment to the UN Human Rights Council. That is why we are today publishing a short summary of the Escazú Agreement to promote wider understanding of its existence and aims and how we might also learn from it. We hope that countries in Latin America will now swiftly complete the ratification processes.